In this video, I'm going to show you my step-by-step -step plan to 83K MRR for my startup, Exploding Topics. So to give you some background, Exploding Topics is a trend spotting platform used by companies large and small and everywhere in between. And we're already on track to hit 83K MRR. But in this video, I'm going to go over the exact step-by-step -step blueprint that we're going to use to get there even faster, to basically accelerate our results. So when I say we're on track to do it, what do I mean? Well, first of all, we're close to that number already. The stuff we're doing is generally working. Like we get 400,000 visitors a month to the site. We're getting 500 trials. We're converting trials at a higher level. Churn is going down. LTV is going up. All that good stuff. But like most entrepreneurs, I'm impatient. So I want to get there even faster. I basically have a plan to help us get there faster besides just doubling down on what works and doing what we're already doing. So to give you some context about what we're already doing that's made the biggest difference for us, the number one thing has been the newsletter. So every week we send out a newsletter called Exploring Topics Tuesday, and we have about 90,000 subscribers on that newsletter with a 50% open rate which I think is really good. Now that newsletter in terms of like conversions that day we send it out, hours after we send it out is not anything special. But the power of the newsletter is that it's like free retargeting. We're reminding people every single week that we exist. We're also building the email list and getting people into the habit of opening our email. So when we do run a promo like a product launch, we have 90,000 people that are ready to open our emails and convert. So launches are one of the reasons that we're able to grow so quickly. In fact, looking back, I would say email based launches to this newsletter list is responsible for like 25 to 30% of our MRR. Just that alone. Another thing that's working really well for us is organic traffic and SEO. So our traffic is about 400,000 visitors a month, most of which is Google organic and it's growing fast. So we've been able to go from literally zero to 400,000 visitors a month in like two years. The reason for that is because we've really focused on SEO, content marketing, link building, all that stuff that I basically did for Backlinko, my last company, we did for exploring topics and it worked even better because it's a much less competitive space. The third thing that's really made a huge difference for us is lowering our churn. So churn was a huge problem for us for a while it was like 10% some months and now it's tracking below 3% so obviously you can never get low enough and I'm going to go over strategies we're going to use to, to lower that even more but that made a huge difference for us because we were basically growing really quickly and we basically hit a brick wall because of churn and we did some things I have a whole video about how we reduced our churn we improved the product more or less and that helped get our churn down from almost 10% on certain months to below 3% if we just sort of just kept things going like they are like just making product improvements improvements like we're doing now, you know, improving our onboarding, getting more organic traffic, publishing more content, maybe adding a new channel. We'd hit that pretty soon, but I want to hit it sooner and get past that. I want to hit 83, but not just hit it, like hit it and then get to the next level even faster. So why 83 K MR? What's magic about that number? Well, it's $1 million AR, right? So Dr. Evil style, that's what we want to do. And that's sort of the next milestone that I want to hit with the business. So the first thing that we're going to do to accelerate our process of getting to 83 K MR is more bottom of the funnel content. So right now, when I talk about hitting 400,000 visitors a month, yeah, that sounds great. And it is a huge number. I'm actually surprised myself that we, we hit that number so quickly, but it's mostly middle and top of the funnel traffic, which is fine. Like how that works is people are on top of the funnel. They sign up for your newsletter and then months or years later, they'll sign up. There's nothing wrong with that. That's the strategy we basically use to get to this point, which is on the cusp of 83K MRR. But what we haven't really done a lot of is this bottom of the funnel content. So to give you some behind the scenes numbers, the site gets about 6,000 newsletter subscribers per month, 500 to 600 trials. Per month. We recently went from like 300,000 to 400,000 visitors a month, which sounds great, but it didn't really make a huge difference in terms of the number of trials or customers that we got. That's most companies. You'll hit a, a level of diminishing returns when you start to get these big traffic numbers. Those increases in traffic numbers won't make as big of a difference as you think. In other words, going from like 10,000 to 50,000 often make a huge difference in the number of trials and customers that you get, but going from 300,000 to 350 won't make as much of a difference. When we went from 350,000 to 400,000, it didn't make a difference because that traffic was made up of bottom of the funnel traffic. So instead of top of the funnel traffic, we really focus on people that were more or less ready to buy or ready to sign up or just being really close to being interested in signing up. So let me show you what I mean with an example. So most of the content that we published up to this point were super top of the funnel stuff like business trends, right? We have a list of business trends, someone searching for business trends and they find us, which they're in our market, right? So we sell trends basically via our, our trends platform and someone searching for trends in business, trends in e-commerce, trends consumer 
trends, whatever. It's basically top slash middle of the funnel content. Doesn't convert great, but gets a lot of volume of people to your site and a certain percentage convert. Contrast that with our bottom of the funnel stuff that we've been publishing lately, like this post that's done really well for us, which is Google Trends Alternatives. They're literally looking for alternatives to Google Trends, which we are in a way. So that person is much more likely to convert. Now, the amount of traffic that we're getting from this bottom of the funnel is still pretty low, but it's really impactful. And we have only scratched the surface with it. Like there's still massive potential to publish more of this bottom of the funnel content, produce better bottom of the funnel content. I'm still kind of learning how to write it, how to produce it at a high level and make it really valuable yet also sell. Really just scratch the surface, but I've seen a lot of potential there. So I have a feeling that's going to be one of the ways we're able to jumpstart is not just going from 400,000 to 500,000 to 600,000, which I'm tempted to do because I'm an SEO nerd, right? Like I just want to get more traffic, but really taking off my SEO hat and looking at more of a CEO hat and saying, okay, going from 400,000 to 500,000 visitors are nice. It's going to increase our trials and increase our MR and all that stuff. But isn't it better to have 10,000 people that are just like really close to buying? That's really what we're focusing on now. So to summarize, like we get a lot of traffic and a lot of it's quality traffic. It's not junk, but it's not like super primo traffic at this point. And that's really the focus now. So instead of getting, you know, to 800,000 visitors or a million or whatever, I'm really just focused on this bottom of the funnel traffic for now and learning how to do that right. The next step we're going to take to grow even faster is enterprise sales. So you know, if you look at Figma before they sold to Adobe, you can see their growth chart over time. And it's basically almost flat at first, even though they're growing. And then there's like this hockey stick inflection point where it's almost vertical. And this is where they started enterprise sales. Now, I don't think we're at the point yet where we'll have like just book a demo, which everyone hates where their pricing is hidden. I might never want to do that, but we are really only scratch the surface with enterprise sales too. We recently closed our first fortune 500 enterprise customer and learned a lot along the way. Like we had no idea what we we're doing in terms of pricing, in terms of contracts, in terms of sales. Like it was just me and my co-founder sort of figuring it out as we went along. And we still were able to close this fortune 500 customer as an enterprise client. And we realized how huge that is. Yes, it's a pain in terms of like paperwork, as opposed to just getting someone to just sign up with a credit card and they automatically convert, but it increased our MRR by like a couple percent, just like that with one customer. And I think if we're able to scale that even a little bit, get one or two of these enterprise customers a month, it can make a huge difference in our growth. The only challenge is I'm realizing you need a true infrastructure to do enterprise sales properly. Like we have no problem with the lead part. Like I mentioned earlier, we're getting a lot of trials every month. And some of those would be perfect enterprise customers if we had a pipeline ready to go. There's so much follow up and meetings and calls and demos and paperwork and pricing. I was happy to do it for this Fortune 500 client because you're not just going to turn someone like that away. But if we really want to scale this process up and have like a proper enterprise plan, account managers and all this stuff, I realized it's a whole, it's almost a whole other business model. Yeah, it took a little bit more effort to close this Fortune 500 enterprise client, but it increased our MRR by a couple percent just like that. And there's basically 0% churn because you signed a three-year contract. It's totally different than someone that's like month to month on your lowest plan. It's easier to get that person, obviously, but they're much more likely to churn and the LTV is gonna be like 150th of the enterprise customer. So this is something that I'm sort of still on the fence on in terms of moving forward because I really just wanted to focus on the product, which I'll talk about in a minute. It's something that we'll experiment with now, learn, and then when we hit 83K MRR, turn on enterprise and get to 2 million a lot faster. The next thing that's going to be huge for us is expansion revenue. This is something we've really only experimented with lately. So to give you some context, when we started exploring topics in terms of monetizing it, it was a paid newsletter. We eventually pivoted to SaaS. And because of that, we didn't really think a lot about expansion revenue because with a paid newsletter, it's like use the free newsletter or you pay. There was no feature gating or anything that you could really do on a paid newsletter. Now that we have a proper SaaS platform, we're looking into ways to get expansion revenue because we do have higher plans that are better. The higher plans have more seats, more features, better service, all that good stuff. And we're trying to still figure out how to get people in app to upgrade. We have actually quite a few people that sign up for the higher plans initially, which is great, but we're not really doing a good job at getting people on the lower plans to upgrade. One of the ways we're going to do it is obviously feature gating where you log in and there's a feature that's there. And then when you click on it, is a call to action to upgrade or at least try and upgrade with enterprise. It's another good thing about enterprise is they're always adding more seats if you're doing a good job serving them. And that's expansion revenue sort of automatically because no one needs to upgrade. So this is something we're sort of experimenting with. I just see huge potential there because we're not doing anything with it, right? Like people do 
upgrade, but they have to basically email us to upgrade. That's how early on we are with the whole process that we don't even have a way for someone in app really to upgrade. And that's something I want to really focus on in the future because it's just a no brainer. People don't upgrade. That's fine, but they at least have the option and there isn't a huge amount of friction like there is now. Next thing that I think will be huge for us is having an affiliate program. We get emails literally every week or every two weeks from someone saying, do you have an affiliate program? Because exploding topics is sort of a unique SaaS product. That's really, it's an easy sell. Like we've never really had a huge problem converting visitors to trials and visitors into customers because it's a unique product that solves a real problem. So if you have an audience and you're sick of pitching the same stuff, this can be something new to sell to your audience and it converts really well. The problem is setting up an affiliate program in theory sounds easy, but in practice, it's kind of tricky. For example, like you just, okay, I'm going to create an affiliate program. Here's some affiliate links. Well, it's not that easy because you want to vet people that are going to promote your product, right? You want to make sure they have an audience. You want to make sure they're not running ads on your brand name. That stuff's not like rocket science and it's not hard, but it takes focus away from creating a great product, which is our focus now and the marketing stuff that I already mentioned. Last and more importantly is lowering churn. So as I outlined in another video, we're able to lower our churn from like 10%, which is just killing us to below 3%. And I think to really hit this inflection point where we're just growing, 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 we'll need to have churn below two and a half, two percent or so. Last month we grew by 10%. We did have more, you know, new MR coming in, but the real difference maker was lowering churn. We're really focusing on building new dedicated features that people can use and get value from right away. So to give an example, when we launched two features, trending startups and trending products, that's the main thing that lowered our churn from almost 10% to below 3% because those people that were logging in and wanting to find that stuff, they didn't have to work at it. They didn't have to work to get value. They just clicked a button and they got value. If you sell on Amazon and you're looking for like the next big thing to sell, you click a button and you get thousands of trending products. If you're an investor and you want to know startups that are growing in the health space that have raised a series A, boom, you can click a button and get it. Before you had to really work for it and people just aren't willing to do that, which makes sense. So they churn. They say, I'm not using it. It's too hard. And they churned. Now they can click a button and get value. And that's kind of our goal is that someone can just log in, click a button, and get value. They're much less likely to churn if they can do that. So yeah, like I said, we're well on our way to 83K MRR. And maybe actually by the time this video comes out, we'll be there. But I just wanted to lay out for you some strategies and techniques that I'm looking to use and test out and scale up to help us grow even faster. And I thought it'd be interesting to share this sort of as I'm doing it, as opposed to after the fact. So you could be on the journey with me as I'm figuring this stuff out. So yeah, that's a bit it. Now I'd like to hear from you. Are you growing a SaaS startup or a subscription business? I'd love to hear what you're doing to scale up and to grow. So leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next video.